Everybody, keep it going for Paul. <laughs> yeah, get in here. Put your phones away, I'm not a Pokemon. <laughs> Big fucker Tom, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Let's do I know you're a little freaked out, it's okay, I know, I'm ginger. <laughs> Don't get freaked out by the whole height thing. It's just a gimmick. <laughs> I'm actually five foot seven. I just got my legs shoved up my ass. <laughs> uh, so I am different. I'm Canadian. And I'm also what you guys call mixed race. It's true. I'm a white girl. I'm a black girl. <laughs> Tom? Yeah. You like a big fat ass, don't you, Tom? Uh, it's fun being me. Spend a good majority of my day watching people watch me. Especially here in the UK, right? Because you fuckers are uptight. I'm mean, not sure if you should laugh. They're like, oh, God, we might go to hell. <laughs> oh, you will. <laughs> it's okay. It's a natural human reaction to be uptight, so I'm fine with it. I don't mind it. In fact, I love the tension. I do. I love when people are physically uptight. It gets me excited. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> Check out the tits on the five-year-old. <laughs> you know you would, Tom. Uh, you look like a dwarf collector. <laughs> oh, man. Love kids' reactions, right? Some of you got kids, know what I'm talking about. They're very honest, very upfront in their reaction, especially when they see somebody they haven't seen before. Some kids see me, they're like, hey, what happened to you? <laughs> Did you get into an accident? I'm like, hell no, I didn't eat my vegetables when I was your age, you little shit. <laughs> Now put me down. <laughs> it's fun being out in public, you know, like I'll be zipping around, you know, in city center or whatever and see some kid, they'll just lock into me and they're just sitting there and they're just staring at me and they're walking trying to keep up with their parents but they're locked into me and they're just staring and staring and not paying attention to where they're going. And yeah! <laughs> oh, it's the best part of my day, let me tell you. <laughs> now we're both disabled. Fuck you. <laughs> A little overzealous there with the old fucking microphone. There. Oh. So you got to be a people person who do this job, and I like the people, you know. And I get people are curious about my life. That's why I talk about the crazy antics that I get into, and I don't mind questions. If you want to come chat later, feel free. You know, probably the most common question I get asked is if I have any children. People wonder, you know, valid if I can carry any kids, and I don't have any kids, but I could. You know, I just don't want the little bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Tight as a drum, Tom. <laughs> I know, because I fucked a Scottish guy and he called me a wee cunt. <laughs> I don't 
need to have kids. All my friends have kids. I travel for a living, get to stay in their houses and their flats and play with their kids. And not being a parent, I had no idea how many baby proofing gadgets they have out on the market. You're familiar with the baby proofing? You know, there's some cool stuff. You know, unless you've got a midget house guest. Holy shit, I couldn't get out of the living room. There was gates <laughs> everywhere. I'm totally trapped. I gotta poop. I had to reach up for the door handle of the loo. It was far too high. I had to lift the kid up on my shoulder. You get it, you little bastard. Teamwork. I'm just saying, it's embarrassing. When you stay at your friend's place, you have to take a shit in the cat box. I like watching people with kids. You know, we live in a day and age where people put clothes on the pets and the kids on leads. Have you seen that crazy shit? Hilarious. Like I said, I don't have kids, but if I did, I wouldn't put them on a lead. Hell no, I'd get the little bastard a saddle. <laughs> Some women have babies for maternal reasons. I'm getting my kid for transportation. <laughs> Saddle up, you little fucker. Mama needs a beer. (laughs) Who's Mama's little sea biscuit? Just I like to do stuff I haven't done before, and I actually went to a little people convention. Uh, we do hang out packs once a year. There's an organization in North America called the LPA, the Little People Here, uh, Little People of America. Here in the UK, it's called the RGA, the Restricted Growth Association. <laughs> So I'm here, there's a national conference somewhere in North America. Uh, Last year was in Boston, Massachusetts. I'd never been to Boston. I was like, I need to check this out. Turns out they're the largest attendance they've ever had. 2,500 little people from all over the world invaded this hotel. So I went by myself. I walked into the hotel reception, and I just about shit myself. I actually had a panic attack. I went up to my room. I called my friends back home. I'm like, you got to come get me. They're fucking everywhere. (laughs) And most of us were staying on the fourth floor of this hotel. And I figured out why, because nobody could reach the fifth floor button in the lift. (laughs) I don't know if you can relate to that 2,500 people that looked like you. It was very overwhelming. I was pissed the entire time. <laughs> and to heighten my anxiety, there was a Jehovah Witness convention at the same time. We're all familiar with the Jehovah's? Yay, party animals. <laughs> yeah. So there I am, pissed, 6 o'clock in the morning, start going around. My friends, let's stay up all night. So shit face, 6 o'clock in the morning, start going around. Banging on the Jehovah Witnesses door. <laughs> Six o'clock in the morning. I swear to God, all you could hear was, Ooh, I don't see anybody. <laughs> I'm glad I went. I wasn't sure if I was going to go. Ooh, does this still on? There we go. What happened? Ooh, you're fucking with the sound. I, is it just in my head? Are we still on? We're good? Okay. Just, okay. The voices in my head were louder all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know if you can relate to that. 2,500 people that looked like you. It was very overwhelming, right? So I was drunk a lot. Plus, I'm glad I went. I wasn't sure. I debated and debated. I have a busy schedule. Plus, it's expensive. It's a seven-night affair. And in Boston, they picked a Marriott like hotel, right on the ocean. So it was well over $300 a night, right? And it gets pricey. So about, an email, about a week out, I emailed a friend of mine, like, hey, can I share a room with you? She said, sure, you can share a room with us. 
All right, so this is what happens at a little people convention. One person will rent a room with two queen-size beds and then 16 of this fuckers show up. <laughs> You'll get a couple of dwarves in the bed, like five dwarves in the bed sleeping sideways like a couple of sausages. You'll get dwarves on pillows in the bath. You'll get dwarves sleeping in the chest of drawers of the wardrobe. <laughs> Stumped up like bunk beds. Yeah, fuck. By the end of it, I paid twenty dollars for the week. Boom. <laughs> Top drawer for this bitch. Yeah. Yeah, and then a dance every night. I like to shake my booty. <laughs> I did the DJ was screwing with this though, because every night he played YMCA by the Village People. I know. Picture twenty five hundred dwarves doing YMCA lowercase. <laughs> <laughs> Time we did the M, it looked like we were doing the butterfly stroll. <laughs> uh, love Liverpool. It's been fun. I'm actually here since Friday. It's been great. Has anybody been wandering around by the docks? Has anybody seen the inflatable, uh, what they, I call it the American Ninja Warrior type course, right? But it's inflatable. <laughs> I've been here since Friday. I've spent no less than three fucking hours watching people take headers off that thing. It's fucking hysterical. I'm telling you, get yourself some good weed, Tom, and go fucking sit there for some of That is the best entertainment by far in Liverpool on this show. So fucking just people fucking... There's loads of jellyfish in the fucking docks. Loads, loads, loads. Sons of a... Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're just it's stagnant water. So and I'm, I'm totally fine with jellyfish, but it's like fucking all these people falling, and then they realize there's jellyfish, and they're trying to climb out of this thing, and it's all plastic, right? So they're fucking sliding all over the place. It's like, oh, you got one on your head. Fuck. <laughs> Liverpool's great. People, you know, Liverpool gets a bad rap, which I find offensive as somebody that's been coming here for 15 years. I love it. People are great. Um, yeah, I was zipping through the uh, L1 shopping area, and these two girls were laughing and pointing and staring at me. And that's, you know, I'm used to it. I'm usually oblivious to it. But I looked at these two chicks, and they were fucking orange. <laughs> Freak, you look like a what's it. <laughs> and I know this is warm by Liverpool standards, but I still find it quite chilly out, uh, you know, and it's, the wind comes off the Mersey, and it's, you know, but it doesn't matter how fucking cold it is in this country. If it's a Friday or Saturday night, you ladies will be out in your club gear, right? You're not going to ruin that shit with a jacket or a jumper, are you, ladies? Fuck no. You know what I'm talking about, right? The ladies with the stilettos that are three sizes too big, you know? And then they're just wearing a top, just a top, barely covering their minge. Have you seen those ladies? It's like, oh, I can see your lips moving, but nobody's talking. That explains the seagulls. <laughs> oh, it's great. This job takes me in all sorts of great places. I got to do a tour in Japan. That was exciting. I'm huge in Japan. <laughs> I was in Romania. I never thought I'd ever get a chance to go to Romania. And the cool thing is, is I have two friends that I went to school with in Canada that now live in Bucharest, so I got to visit them. And they have two full-grown Newfoundlander dogs. Yeah. I spent four days getting teabagged by two black bears. <laughs> slobber. <laughs> yeah. 
was in Ireland last month. Ireland is great. I got to do something on my bucket list. I went on a hot air balloon ride over the cliffs of Moher. And I've seen hot air balloons from a distance, right? But when you're underneath them, oh, exciting. You know, oh, and I had the most spectacular view of the inside of a basket. <laughs> Probably my most, my favorite place on the planet to perform is uh, Las Vegas. Have you been to Vegas? Yeah. yeah, and I've done some cool shows around the globe, but check this out. I got to do a comedy show at a swingers club. <laughs> no, an adult sex club in Las Vegas. How cool is that? <laughs> and being a midget at a sex club is like being a prized pig at a country fair. <laughs> was very popular. <laughs> and I'm no prude. You gotta do like the locals. <laughs> I ended up having sex with an eye doctor. I didn't know he was an eye doctor just in the middle of sex. He was like, one finger or two? Better or worse? <laughs> one or two? Better. <laughs> one fist or two? It's <laughs> getting blurry. <laughs> You'd learn a valuable lesson, though. Never let your eye doctor cut up your cocaine. <laughs> First line's always really big, and every line after that just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> you ever been to a swingers club, Tom? <laughs> oh, I got one back in the hotel. <laughs> But if you get a hand job for me, it makes your dick look bigger. <laughs> no worry, brother, I got two hands. <laughs> Fun for the whole family. <laughs> Tom, you could just pop me up in your dick and spin me around. <laughs> I'll be your own little midget spinner. <laughs> You're going to be in fucking therapy tomorrow, aren't you? I got sexual harassed by a ginger dwarf. <laughs> Nobody will believe you. How old are you guys? How old are you? I'm, and then you? I'm 20. 20? Oh, oh, fucking, oh. <laughs> there she goes. Now you're fucking taken. <laughs> uh, 24, oh, fucking, that can ruin both of you. That'll be great. I'm in my 40s, oh my God. When you're a woman in your 40s and you're horny, they call you cougar. <laughs> like that lady, yeah. <laughs> A cougar. I don't identify. I don't identify with being a cougar. You know, I, I don't like that term, cougar. I'm I, I'm more like a squirrel. I'm a <laughs> I'm a squirrel. I'm looking for some 24 year old nuts. <laughs> oh God. Hopefully I don't look my age. I don't act my age. But your body does tell you different. Shit starts to change as you get older. You know, I know I'm getting older because I'm getting pubic hair growing out of my chin. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, don't you, sister? Yeah. You know, don't get a memo nothing right, ladies. You just wake up one morning, look like a goat. <laughs> 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 Stressful. It's bitching to my best friend about the chin hair. She's like, maybe you should try the waxing, the waxing for the hair removal. So there we were in Vegas, going to have a girls dance spa. We're going to pamper ourselves. I'm going to get my chin waxed. It's going to be glorious. Then she springs it on me. Guess what? I signed us up for bikini waxes. It'll make you feel sexy. The bikini wax. Like, listen, don't worry. It'll only sting for a little bit. She didn't tell me what happens when that shit starts to grow back. <laughs> But I can't really reach my coochie, right? So I'm scooting across the carpet. 
My dog's looking at me, hey, that doesn't feel so bad, does it? Oh, God. I'm just stunned that people do these weird things to themselves in the name of cosmetics. I'm still stunned that people do Botox, right? We've all heard about it. A lot of people don't realize what Botox stands for. It stands for botulism toxin, which is high-grade food poisoning. Basically, they inject this shit into your facial muscles. It paralyzes the nerve endings, but it gets rid of wrinkles. Yippee! <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. What they don't tell you is you end up drooling for months. It's like, holy shit, look at me. I'm a sexy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Never looked younger. <laughs> I'm having an orgasm. <laughs> oh, and it's not just women that are insecure in this day and age. No, things have changed in 2018. There's now men out there that are very insecure. So insecure that they're getting Botox injected into their nut sacks. <laughs> it is called Scrotox. <laughs> Yeah, the whole idea is you inject the Botox into the testes area. It elongates them just a little bit, just enough to take out the wrinkles to make them more aesthetically pleasing. I'm here to tell you guys, on behalf of all women, nothing's going to make those skin kiwis look any better. <laughs> nothing! obsessed with weird cosmetic trends and you know when you look something up on the internet and then you go to your Facebook all of a sudden your news feed has related topics because I like uh, weird cosmetic trends this came up on my feed the heading was ladies do not put glitter in your vaginas <laughs> so you know I had to click on that shit <laughs> So it turns out there's capsules that you can buy that are filled with glitter that a woman can insert up her hoo-ha, and then while you're having sex, the lubrication dissolves the capsules, and then when you're done, it looks like you fucked a unicorn. <laughs> Happy New Year! I am all for trying something if it doesn't sound too bizarre, like oh, I got a gift card for a fish pedicure. And I was like, this somebody's got to be winding me up. There's no way that this is a thing. It is. It's legit. You put your feet in a tank of fresh water. It's filled with little minnow-sized guppies, and they feed on your dead foot flesh. And that exfoliates your feet. So I show up at the spa. I get up onto the bench. I go to put my feet in the water, but my feet are dangling above the water. <laughs> So the lady's like, you gotta get down, you gotta jump down. So I jumped down and the water came up to my tits. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is what the fish bargained for either. Let me tell you. Oh, they did their job. Oh, so exfoliated. Oh. Oh, oh, I think they found Nemo. <laughs> Woo. The crazy thing was, apparently there was a hundred fish when I started and only 80 when I got out. <laughs> and they were covered in glitter. <laughs> uh, oh, you guys are lovely. Thank you for coming out to support live comedy and... Uh, <laughs> One of the best clubs in the country. All of the acts that you've seen and acts that you do see, we're all, we all have um, uh, videos for Hot Water if you go to their website or their YouTube channel. I've got videos of stuff you didn't see tonight. I'm also bringing my uh, hour-long show. It might be longer than that. It's going to be in the studio in September. I can't remember the exact date, but if you go to my website or you go to the Hot Water website, tickets I think are probably on sale for that. So uh, before I go, well, if you want to keep in touch with me, um, I'm on Facebook. i got a fan page so you can finger me. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the Twitter so you can twat me. <laughs> I am Dwarf Diva on Instagram. 
So, yeah, I love hearing from people, so keep in touch if you would like to. Uh, before I go, I do talk about body image in my show, and I do believe in this day and age, everybody can be sexy, right? You just got to find it and bring it out. Pull it out, whip it up, buff it, spray paint it orange like the Scouse bitches. <laughs> I feel slightly deceptive because I, I know I look like I got big boobs for somebody my size. It's just an illusion. You know, no secrets later, boys. <laughs> this is good news, ladies. I got a bra that's out on the market that actually gathers the fat from your back and pushes it all forward. Huh? This is what back fat looks like, fellas. It's all about location, location, location. I'm telling you, this bra works too, because this tattoo used to be on my shoulder. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. Thanks a lot. I'm Tanya Lee Davis. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> <laughs>